Welcome to the National Science Day program. I am Shreyas Mangave, faculty at ISAR Pune. My research interest involves reconstructing past climate using tree rings. And in this lecture, I am going to introduce this subject to you. As a kid, you must have seen the cut, cut section of a tree and determined the age of the tree based on how many number of rings are there in it. But after completion of this lecture, I hope that you will be able to appreciate there is much more to it than just finding out of a, finding out age of a tree. In the beginning, I will talk about why do we need to know about past climate, what is a climate proxy and then I will introduce tree rings as a very useful climate proxy. In the end, I will discuss some of the results that are obtained from the tree ring research data. You must have seen these dramatic pictures representing extreme weather induced disasters. The top left picture shows the flood that occurred in 2005 in Mumbai, where it rained more than 1000 mm in a day. The top right picture shows recently occurred landslide in the Koina Reservoir region of Maharashtra. The bottom left picture shows Badrinath flood that occurred in 2013 and Uttarakhand landslide that occurred in seven, on 7th February of 2021 is shown in the bottom right picture. When you look at these pictures, the question that comes into our mind is, are these disasters part of a natural climate variability or human induced climate change is responsible for this? To answer this question, we should look at available weather data. This graph shows number of meteorological stations in India. First meteorological station was established in 1792. Since 1813, we have a continuous weather record. By 1871, there were about 300 meteorological stations in India. And after 1952, the number of stations were more than 500 and it gave a good special coverage. But if you look at the special coverage of this data, we have very good instrumental weather record from 1971. So that is last 150 years. But if you want to know the climate before 1971, we don't have any record with us. And whatever instrumental record we have, it is insufficient to reveal long term climate variability. So how do we know climate variability before instrumental period? We rely on climate proxies which gives indirect information about past climate. A good climate proxy must fulfill these three conditions. One, there should be a material evidence of the past and that material could be wood, rock or ice. The second criteria is material should give information about the climate present at that time. And the third one is, we should be able to assign a calendar year to that material. That means we should, we should, there should be a way to find out when was this material formed. Let us look at examples of a few terrestrial proxies. Ice core is an important proxy. Scientists have taken ice cores from ice sheets. Those are present in Greenland and Antarctica. The material evidence in this case is ice. The ice layer thickness, isotopic composition of hydrogen in it or the level of CO2 which is present in those bubbles tells us about past climate. And we can assign calendar year to these individual materials by layer counting. Another proxy is speleothems which are cave deposits and the top right picture shows a transverse section of a speleothem and the bottom picture shows a longitudinal section of a speleothem and you can clearly see the growth rings there. In the case of speleothems, the material evidence we have is calcium carbonate and isotopic composition of oxygen which is there in the CaCO3 that is oxygen is there in the uh, calcium carbonate and the isotopic ratio of oxygen in it gives information about past climate. And again, 
we can assign calendar year to these individual rings by either layer counting or uh, based on radio isotope datings. Tree rings are also very useful proxies. And a ring represents growth that accrued during a particular year. In this case, material evidence we have is wood. And the information such as ring width, ring density, isotopic composition of oxygen and carbon, which is of the material which is present inside the ring, gives us information about past climate. And again, we can assign calendar year to each rings by just ring counting. If we know uh, the date or the year the tree was cut, we can assign that year to the outermost ring and we can go and counting back and assign uh, calendar year to individual rings. Now as a climate proxy, tree rings has advantages. Trees are everywhere. In the case of ice cores, uh, the ice cores are only available at high latitude and high altitude regions, but trees are everywhere. Tree rings are annually resolved. That means each year there is one ring. Because they are annually resolved, we can assign calendar year to each and every individual ring. And more importantly, it shows a continuous record. So there is no break in record. Even if, if there are some breaks, there is a way to find out those breaks, I can adjust uh, the assigning age to individual rings accordingly. Now tree can live for thousands of years. So this one picture shows a cross section of a giant tree and the person on the left hand side is A. E. Douglas uh, and he is considered as a one who formalized this subject, dendrochronology. It is a science of tree rings. And how do we take the samples? We can take the samples, either take a cross section of a tree. For example, suppose tree is already uh, fallen because of cyclonic activity or it was cut for some other, uh, for any reason. Then we can have a cross section of a tree and we can look at the tree rings. The most preferred way to take a sample is to take a tree ring core. And the corer is shown in this picture. So this is corer. The shaft goes inside and we can take a core out of this. And when you take this core and polish it, it looks something like this. So these are individual rings in a tree and we can, we can do all our analysis using this sample. Again, these three pictures shows various uh, tree cores. On the right hand side, there is a bark and on the left hand side, it goes towards center. So the area between two boundaries is one ring. Now only those trees which shows strong seasonal growth show tree rings. So not all trees show the tree rings. Now seasonality and growth could be due to soil moisture availability. In case of uh, region such as India, monsoonal region, where there is a wet phase and there is a dry phase. June, July, August, September is a wet phase where tree actively grows. But during dry season, because of lack of soil moisture availability, there is no growth. So this strong seasonality in growth induces rings in a tree. The tree rings could be also because of temperature variability in the region. For example, in high latitude regions, or in high altitude area where temperature variability is drastic. So this range of temperature variability can, can induce tree rings. For example, in winter, there is no growth followed by then spring, summer and autumn. So summer and spring represents a time when tree grows maximally. So again, this differential growth gives rings, tree rings. Now, if you look at uh, trees such as teak, which is from Indian region, again from Indian region, it shows strong seasonal growth. During wet period, it grows and during dry season, it is because it is a deciduous plant, 
it is leafless so it shows good tree rings but if you look at trees such as banyan tree where it is it is kind of evergreen and there is no very strong seasonal growth so it doesn't show very good tree rings now not all trees are suitable for uh, tree ring research even though they show good uh, tree ring patterns the most suitable ones are one which are on a plant away from the source water region like away from the stream or away from the river and they are on a steep slope where soil is very thin in such cases individual trees can be as old as 5000 years old but if you look at a tree which is which looks very healthy so even though it might show tree rings it is not very suitable for uh, past climate reconstruction and the age of the tree may not be more than say few centuries few hundred years now there is a technique called cross dating what is done in this technique is you take a sample from a living tree we also have a sample from a dead tree and also some samples from a old archaeological sites where people have used the trunk of a tree in a construction when you take a cross section or when you take a core from these samples you can see the tree ring patterns are there and there could be a, pe a period where tree rings are very narrow which is shown here in this slide so you can match this pattern of uh, tree ring width variation and you can create a continuous record and by this way we can extend the time that is covered by tree ring record to few thousand years even though individual tree is for only say 200 or 300 years but this pattern matching and extending the record can create a very long chronologies for example these are some of the oldest chronologies which are which have been constructed in, in the world so bristlecone pine trees from california they gives a tree ring chronology which is 800 8000 years old the european oak uh, are used to reconstruct tree ring chronologies or construct tree ring chronologies and they cover time span of more than 10000 years german pine again shows chronology of 12000 years in indian region the one of the longest known chronologies they it it is from 420 to 2003 uh, ce and it represents around 1500 years now let us see how climate information is preserved in tree ring and we will take example of tree ring width width of a ring represents growth during that particular year when we find wider rings so those wider rings represents conditions favorable for growth of a tree and those conditions could be higher rainfall or less severe winter higher rainfall means if the soil moisture is a limiting parameter for tree growth the year when it rains more that year the width of a tree would be more or in case of a tree where temperature is a growth limiting factor then less severe winter would show a broader rings on the contrary narrow ring represents conditions unfavorable for tree growth for example there could be drought that year or there could be prolonged and severe winter so width is a proxy for either rainfall or temperature variability but if you look at a typical ring width variation in a tree which is shown in this picture again right hand side is towards the bark and left hand side is towards the center of the tree you can clearly see that width of a ring is is becoming smaller and smaller as we go from the center of the tree to the bark that means width of the rings decreases as tree grows older so this is a biological growth trend and we cannot say that because there were narrow or broader rings near the center of a tree and narrow rings towards the bark side the rainfall or the temperature has been systematically changing 
and that does not mean the rainfall has been decreasing or winter has getting more and more severe with time before we use the ring width variation for reconstructing past climate we need to remove this age related growth trend in the tree we will see this example here so this is one teak sample which is collected by indian institute of tropical meteorology pune you can clearly see that again left hand side is the the older times and the most recent would be towards the right hand side and this graph shows how ring width is changing with time in during earlier times on an average the ring widths were more but during later time the ring width reduces significantly now the fit line which is shown here which is exponential fit it represents the growth trend and that trend needs to be removed so there are various statistical ways of removing this trend and when we detrain the tree ring width variation we will get a time series of ring width variation which are detrended and that detrended ring width variation is used to reconstruct past climate for example in this case the narrow rings which are present here that year represents the year when the rainfall was less and the year when the ring width indices are more for example here that year represents the year of higher rainfall now in addition to tree ring width variation the density of a tree ring is also an important proxy for past climate typically it is observed that density of tree ring is sensitive to summer temperatures again this picture shows a few rings for example the the region between this border and this border is a is a ring and that represents growth occurred during that year now using various instruments we can measure density of various parts of these rings and the later part of the ring that means which is synthesized during summer which is represented by this darker patches here those are the ones which shows higher density and if you measure density of that that represents the summer temperature so a time series of a maximum late wood density is of one use a proxy for summer temperatures in addition to tree ring width and density within that ring there are some chemical proxies for example we can measure what is the isotopic composition of a material that represents this tree ring and one of the ways of doing it is we extract cellulose from this individual rings and this uh, the photograph shows this extracted cellulose cellulose from these individual rings and using sophisticated instruments such as mass spectrometers we measure the oxygen isotopic composition of and carbon isotopic composition of cellulose from each individual rings and that is a good proxy for uh, past variability in rainfall so we have a time series which represents the oxygen isotopic composition of a ring of every year and that can be used to reconstruct past rainfall so in addition to these uh, proxies there are some structures within the trees which are very useful in understanding uh, past climate one example is fire scars so there are various um, there are various regions in the world where forest fires are a menace we have seen in recent years there are many very strong forest fires in european region and in american region when fire, fire forest fire occurs part of a bark often gets burnt if you look at a cross section of that particular tree which has been suffered by this forest fire we see the a part of a tree is damaged and there are fire scars which are present here so there is a way to because we know each year uh, there is one ring so and we know the outermost age of the outermost ring we can find out the exact year during which there was a forest fire and this forest fire chronology can also be built so the picture on the right hand side shows 
these uh, fire scars and individual years assigned to them. For example, there was a forest fire in uh, 1245, then 1261, 1277, 1291, likewise. And there was a severe forest fire in 1329 as well. So, in addition to this ring width chronology or tree ring isotope chronology, there could be fire scar chronology as well. And we can measure how this intensity and frequency of fire scar is changing with time. The one study which was published uh, in 2006, the results of that study is shown here. So, this graph shows the wildfire frequency and this red bars indicate that. The black curve indicates temperature in that region. So, you can clearly see that uh, the forest fires in western United States, how it is changing with time. We can see from 1970 to 2000, the frequency of fire is increasing. Also, whenever there is a strong summer and spring temperature, the frequency of fires is more. So, what this work establishes is warmer temperature and earlier spring are associated with frequent forest fires. Another useful structure that is observed in tree rings is related to volcanic eruptions or very strong winters. So, this picture shows the, uh, the, the map shows the position of Mount Pinatubo and it erupted in 1991 and it was a very explosive uh, volcano. What people observed is following that year, that is 1991, the average global temperature dropped by 0.4 degrees Celsius. So, that is volcano induced cooling or volcano induced global cooling. When such cooling occurs in a region where the temperature is already very low, the further lowering of temperature can have uh, a drastic effect on tree rings. You can again see a picture here where individual tree rings are there. This is one ring. The next ring is here, the third one is here. What you can clearly see is there is something unusual structure which is present in this ring and that is called as a frost bite and what it represents is a very low temperature during that time. And again this particular picture uh, is from Siberian pine tree in Mongolia. Drastic cooling due to massive volcanic eruption and it caused freezing of the sap in the cells during the growing season in years 536 to 537 CE. So, during that particular year, because of this volcanic eruption, temperatures were lowered significantly and that induced this frost bite in a tree. So, when, you, when we observe tree ring structure, especially from a tree where temperature is already very limiting parameter for tree growth. We can find out this uh, frost bites and we can talk about how temperature or very extreme temperature might have changed in the past. One such study was done in Argentina. Again, uh, there is a particular tree species uh, which is there in Argentina and people measured the, the frequency and the recurrence of these frost bites and what they observed is in this Argentinian region, whenever there was a La Nina year, it was associated with this frost ring record and this frost structure or frost ring which was present can be used as a regional proxy for sub freezing temperatures in that area. So, again it is a very useful structure to understand past climate variability. Now, let us look at how various attributes of tree ring, for example, ring width or ring density or isotopic composition can be used to reconstruct past climate. We will do with one particular example. What is shown in this picture is uh, an indices from a tree and it is a drought index. The top part of this figure shows tree ring data 
and it covers a time span from 1146 to 2006. In the same region, based on instrumental data or meteorological stations in the same region, we have instrumental data, instrumental drought data from 1877 to 2006. So there is an overlapping period between tree ring record and instrumental record. Okay. So what is done is we calibrate the tree ring record with the instrument record. And this plot shows this calibration. So tree ring data is plotted on x-axis and drought index is plotted, instrumental drought index is plotted on the y-axis. And we find this correlation and this correlation gives one equation. What is that equation? In this particular case it is when we calibrate tree ring record with concurrent instrumental data record, we find out this equation and drought index is correlated with tree ring data with this linear equation with a slope of minus 1.1275 and intercept of 0 0.2026. So we, we have now this equation and if we, if we have tree ring data using this equation, we can find out drought index in the past. Let us look at this example here. Again, we have tree ring data from 1146 to 2006 and we do not have any instrumental record from 1146 to 1877 because instrumental data is available only since 1877 onwards. So we don't have any climate record for that time. So what we can do for that period is use this calibration equation. Again, there is a tree ring record from one region and there is instrumental decal from the same region. And this calibration or calibration equation can be used to reconstruct past climate variability. You can see the reconstructed climate here. Again, on the x-axis time is there. On the y-axis, reconstructed drought is there. So we can see how drought index or how frequent were the droughts since 1146 to 2000. Six. So this is how we reconstruct past climate. There are various rigorous statistical tests which are employed to find out what is the uncertainty in the, uh, the reconstructed climate. And the error bar here shows uncertainty in the reconstructed climate. Now I will present some of the results which are obtained using this kind of uh, tree ring based uh, reconstructions. Uh, we carried out one study in the Himalayan region and the tree rings or the tree from the Kelong region were sampled and this region receives very less rainfall and it is in the monsoon shadow region. So this, this, this place is there in the western Himalaya. When we carried out oxygen isotopic analysis of the trees from this region and calibrated with concurrent climate. And using this calibration equation, we reconstructed past drought variability. And what and, and that reconstruction is shown here. The PDSI represents uh, this is a this is an index of drought and how it changed in the past is shown here. What this study establishes is very important parameter, uh, important fact that whenever there was a little ice age, uh, whenever the conditions were cooler. For example, the conditions those were there during Little Ice Age, the climate in the Kelong region was wetter. When there was a medieval climate anomaly or medieval warm period, then the conditions in the Kelong region were drier. So during current warm period, where temperatures are increasing, there is an increasing aridity in this region. So what this study predicts if, if the temperatures are going to increase in this region, there will be more and more droughts. So in a, in a coming warm period, the Kelong region of Western Himalaya is going to suffer, uh, is going to suffer more and more droughts. Now this slide shows uh, the places where various treating data are available. Mostly these data sets represents tree ring width variation uh, variations and uh, there are many 
the each dot here represents one side chronology that means it represents a chronology which is prepared by uh, by combining uh, individual trees again by doing cross dating and these data sets are used extensively to understand past climate variability we we'll look at some examples the data set from indian region is used to construct what is known as a monsoon asia drought index it is mada it is uh, its short form is mada and it shows climate variability since 1300 ce and green dots represents uh, the places where tree ring chronologies are there and uh, the red crosses indicates where instrumental uh, weather record or um, a gridded data set of drought is available there. so what this study has shown is whatever past severe droughts that occurred in this region in asian region and those are reflected in the reconstructed climate record that means the whatever climate record which has been reconstructed it both it faithfully preserves the severe records which were severe drought which occurred in the past for example east india drought that occurred during 1790 and 1792 to 1796 is affected here so what this work shows is it tells about historical droughts known as well as unknown droughts it also tells us about reasons for such droughts and this can be understood by comparing uh, the climate during that particular time and rainfall or special pattern of drought variability and it also tells us how various phenomena such as enso affect the monsoon so this is one important study which has been done similar study was done by reconstructing drought in south america and the atlas which is produced is called sada south american drought atlas this study establishes variation in return time of droughts and pluvials this plot shows that on the x axis there is a time and on the y axis return time for droughts and pluvials are shown here what you can clearly see is the return period of droughts around 1400 years were typically 80 years that means for every 80 year there was a drought but since mid 20th century this return period has drastically decreased in the most recent years the return period is 10 years for example then every 10 years there is a drought in this region so this study clearly establishes an increase in the severe hydroclimatic events since mid 20th century so such kind of important information has been obtained from this uh, south american drought atlas similarly uh, north american drought atlas has also been generated and this this typical uh, plot shows the civil war drought which occurred from 1956 to 1965 so these kind of reconstructions that is continental scale climate reconstructions are very useful in various ways one it can it can help us to establish the reasons why a given drought pattern is there in the given area it also gives an opportunity for various climate models to test their predictions so climate models there are there are various climate models and the how do we know that the whatever the outcome of that climate model is there whether it is true or not and these kind of uh, special patterns gives that opportunity if a climate model successfully reproduces this past uh, special variability in drought then we can say that we can give more credence to that climate model so this is one of the useful feature of past climate reconstructions now this graph shows one of the most published uh, graph regarding past climate variability 
it shows temperature anomaly. So I'm talking about graph on the right hand side. Temperature anomaly with time and how temperature varied in past say 2000 years. And again, with such data sets are generated, tree ring data is one of the important uh, data that goes into these reconstructions and which can be seen in the left hand side. Now, in various continents or in various regions, uh, different proxies are used to reconstruct this past climate variability. And in each region, you can see in this dark green color represents the contribution of tree ring chronologies in that reconstruction. You can see in Asia, everything is tree ring based. In Australia, more than 50% climate reconstruction is based on tree ring width variability. And in South America, it is almost say close to 75%. In North America, especially in the western part of North America, it is almost 100% tree ring. So tree ring is a very important archive and it, it, it is used extensively to understand past climate continental scale as well as global scale. Now this graph shows how climate varied in the past. And we can see till 1600, the temperatures were decreasing slowly. But post this 1600, there was a quiet period, but typically post 1800, there is a drastic increase in temperature. And this increasing temperature is again reflected in uh, other data sets as well. So in summary, what I would like to say is, Tree rings are very important climate proxies and it has significantly enhanced our understanding of the climate variability during past 2000 years. With this, I stop my presentation and I thank you for attending this lecture.